Uh, yeah, so um, my name is Declan Regan. I'm a cycling and walking project officer at Active Travel England. I'm actually seconded to Active Travel England from my host organisation of Cycling UK, which is a national cycling charity. Um, and I'm here today to talk about the Active Travel Social Prescribing Programme, which I've been leading on for the past year. For those who happened to be at this conference last year, you may have uh, remembered a presentation by my colleague, Jenny Box, who was talking about where the program was up to at that point of finishing the feasibility work. So this is really a year on in social prescribing and where we've managed to get these programs to, and also a little bit of a look to the future and what we're hoping these are going to achieve, because as I mentioned, they are a program running until 2025. So that goes through my presentation aims. Um, and I'm really happy to say that I'm joined here today by a number of the pilots who are delivering the program. So just to put you all on the spot, if you are from one of the pilots that's been funded, can you just stick your hand up? Excellent, so if everyone can just look around the room, anyone who's got their hand up, if you've got a really awkward question, they are the people to talk to, <laughs> not me. Excellent, thank you, especially on this front row. There we go, that's what we're aiming for. So yeah, so like I say, um, I wanna talk about what the program is, but equally, I also want to introduce Active Travel England, which is an organization that's really, really new in its inception. It's the new executive agency for uh, the Department for Transport. And I wanna just give a little bit of a flavor about what ATE is trying to accomplish, and also some of the opportunities that we're gonna get from having this new executive agency. I'm uh, gonna talk about the pilots, going to talk about the joys of developing a shared monitoring and evaluation plan and also uh, finish with a video because everyone prefers to listen to a video than listen to me. And it honestly, it's such a great example of how this program will work in action. So uh, I'll get going. Um, so Active Travel England, uh, it's got a vision uh, where we want everyone to have an attractive and safe choice to walk, wheel or cycle. Now note that there's three breakouts there, walk, wheel or cycle. And that is something that when we talk about active travel, the messaging around what active travel actually is gets a little bit lost. And when you bring it back to its basics of walk, wheel, or cycle, it starts to make a little bit more sense to the people you're working with on the ground. Uh, but essentially, we've got quite an ambitious goal when you look at it, which is by 2030, we're looking for 50% of short urban trips to be done by those methods. And when you look at what the current levels are right now, it's going to take a bit of work. Um, but we're really heartened by the relationship that we've got with the local authorities, the relationships that we have with uh, cross-government partners and also with non-government agencies like Cycling UK, uh, Living Streets, who are going to help towards deliver, delivering some of that work. And I also hope some of the people in this room will also be able to contribute to that. Um, it has a different focus uh, around how we're going to uh, engage people around walking, how we're going to measure that in terms of the stages, but also how we're going to look at it from a cycling. And there is a very strong uh, focus on primary school aged children and really trying to increase that with that intention of if you develop the mindset now, that will carry through into later life. And also when you consider the engagement with uh, families, if you work through the young person, you've got a better chance of engaging with the adults. So I guess I may be talking to the converted in the room here, but just to remind everyone on what social prescribing actually is, it's sometimes known as community referral. And if I'm really honest, it's been around for a while, it's just not being called social referral, uh, social prescribing. So it's a means of enabling health professionals to refer people to a range of local and non-clinical services. It's not just about GPs and GPs in their practice. It's also the hospitals. It's also some of the other um, services that you've heard mentioned in the, the morning session. But the idea is, is that it's around taking it from a non-clinical setting and taking it into the more community work that's available to them and giving them that non-clinical support. Um, but what do we actually mean by active travel social prescribing and why is the Department for Transport Active Travel England interested in this work? Well, we're quite lucky that it, we have a document called Gear Change that was brought in during the uh, Boris administration, uh, which made it a manifesto commitment for us to look into this. And in that document, it mentioned about a cycling on prescription GP service and the idea that GPs would be able to give bikes to people that they were working for. Now we've broadened that um, to include the other aspects of active uh, travel. So uh, walking is now a major part of this program. But in, in addition to that, noting some of the demands that are on the healthcare services and on the staff that are in there in terms of the amount of capacity they have to really do this work, we've broadened out the number of partners that can make these referrals to also engage with the community voluntary sector. So that's where some of these um, health focused charities, some of these religious focused groups, uh, groups who are very focused around social engagement within their local communities all have a really strong active role to play now in, in engaging with this program and signposting people into it. 
Um, so as I mentioned, when Jenny was sat here last year, or stood here last year, should I say, she was talking about where we were up to in that program of uh, finishing a, a 2.5 feasibility, 2.5 million feasibility study, which would involve 31 local authorities across uh, England. From that, we have successfully invested a further 13.9 million into 11 pilot areas to run this three-year program through to 2025. And those 11 pilots have come from the 31. And basically what they have been able to present from their feasibility work is a really interesting uh, and innovative and different types of pilots, which gives us a chance to test and learn lots of different approaches to try and learn as much as we possibly can and see what we can actually scale. So again, going back to the, the conversations and the... Um, that was exciting. Um, it, no, it's okay. Um, but, you know, if we think about uh, some of the challenges that were put to us in this morning session, actually, we're trying to do some of that within this program. Um, and the fact is, is that, you know, active travel isn't just focused about transport. It isn't just focused on getting people to cycle and walk because we like people cycling and walking. It's because it makes a difference to their health. It's because it makes a difference to their wealth. It's because it makes a difference to the communities that they work in and live in. So ATSP has um, a couple of really, really core targets of what we're trying to do with this. And the first one, it's, it's about working with those that we can identify really need it. So when the pilots put forward their bids, they had to not just take a population holistic approach, they had to identify core communities that they wanted to work with. So whether that was geographical or whether that was uh, individual uh, types of, uh, of cohorts of clients that they wanted to work with. Um, obviously, we want them to embed cycling and walking into the programs that they're doing. And the point is, is that like cycling and walking is the, the hook, it's the methodology of working with these individuals. Um, and we want to see that that can actually be built into the social prescribing systems. And that is probably one of the biggest challenges we're going to have with this program of how do you position the information of what is out there and make it useful to the communities you're trying to work with, but give that information to the link workers and to the various other contacts that we're going to be engaging through in a way that it's easy for them to understand and it's easy for them to pass it on to their client when actually the meetings and the conversations that they're happening that, that they're having are extremely broad, really holistic conversations. And as we said, when you've got an individual that might be coming forward where actually finances is the challenge for them and potentially they could be wondering about how they're going to pay for next week's shopping, how are you going to have a conversation with them where cycling and walking is actually something that can be seen as a here and now with priority? And that is something that you know the, the pilots are all looking at in different ways and trying to engage with their partners on. But obviously, uh, within Active Travel England, the funding that we provide isn't just towards schemes like this, uh, where it's revenue work, it's also capital work that we've done. And there's a large amount of infrastructure development that's gone on in the areas that we've, we've funded with these pilots. And we want to see that that's being activated. We want to see that it's being utilized and actually that it's being built in the right areas. So not only is this program going to uh, enhance and activate what's already been built or what's in the planning to be built, but it's also going to inform the future work of what could be needed and what is actually the barriers on the ground that taking a dual approach would actually help to solve. And finally then, um, with all of this work, if going back to our 2030 goal of 50% of uh, active travel journeys in, in uh, short area, in, in ah, sorry, my words just went wrong then. Um, the idea is, is that we're trying to convert the uh, modal shift of individuals. So instead of them taking cars to the short journeys, they convert that into walking and cycling to those areas. So this program isn't just Active Travel England working in isolation. And Jenny made a really good uh, pitch of this last year, really, to, to show how maybe this, this program is more than the sum of its parts. Um, 13.9 million isn't a drop in the ocean, but in terms of what we're bringing to the table here, um, by working with partners such as the NHS, such as the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities, National Academy for Social Prescribing, DEFRA, Sport England, and Department of Health and Social Care, we've got the opportunity to learn from those partners about what's already in play, such as the Green Social Prescribing Program, what learning can we take from that, but also what are the challenges that they have? What are the plans that they've got in the future? What is the things that they can help give to our pilots right now that's going to make it easier for them to do the work that they're trying to do here? Uh, and so far, that steering group has been involved in developing the feasibilities, 
it's been involved in the review of those bids of the approval of the 11 pilots that we've worked with there's ongoing conversations with them in terms of the training that we can provide to the pilots as well through that and they're really really involved partners and someone you know uh, that we're really keen to continue that involvement with this doesn't stop at central government level this is how it also works on the ground with the pilots as well and it's really really important to point out that this isn't active travel england funding just the transport team of the local authority it's funding the health teams it's funding the leisure teams it's working with uh parks and green spaces it's encouraging those local authorities to not work in silo but to actually bring a shared approach to the way that they're operating on the ground and because every single pilot had to be approved not just by our transport leave but by the director for public health there's a really clear synergy within the pilots about what they're trying to do with that. Now, for anyone who's not seen a theory of change before, please don't panic. Um, but essentially, this is where we talk about what we're putting into the program, what are we trying to get out of it, and what are we trying to prove. Um, so you'll be happy to hear that I think these slides are being sent around afterwards, so you don't need to try and cram this all down here. But when we're talking about the funding that we're going to give, we're not just talking about the funding of directly the 13.9, but we're talking about the funding that's been given out in infrastructure work. We're talking about that it's the skills of the partners that I've just mentioned and the, um, the various different policy and networking work that we can do. It's the cycle hires that they're going to put out. It's the promotional activities that are going to be delivered, the training that's going to be given out to the community. And it's also that link worker engagement, which is a real strong key piece of this work because it's all well and good putting on cycling and walking activities. We've done that. We know we can do that. But actually, how do we make sure that these activities are engaging with the right individuals and being spoken about in the right ways with those people? Um, and you know, there's a really strong core element of that work where it's how do you work with the professionals that are speaking to those parties and making sure that they understand what the message is. So from that, the outcomes that we're trying to engage, uh, that we're trying to get out of this, you know, they kind of speak for themselves in terms of that. We do want to improve the awareness of active travel. We do want to improve the perceptions not just perceptions of safety, but the perceptions of enjoyment of it as well and seeing the value of it. Um, we're also looking towards changing the attitude of that act of travel. So again, going back to that short journeys mindset of you know, showing them that it can be done. Um, and as you know, I mentioned, there's a really interesting piece of work that's going on now where it's the relationship work that's going on in the local authorities that's, that's really coming out of this as an interesting learning piece and the system change side of this which actually getting the silos to break down just that little bit, trying to get those different um, teams to engage with each other, trying to get them to share the values of what they're trying to achieve. It's having a larger impact than just this work. It's showing them where they could work in the future. And it's, it's actually, you know, we're already hearing some really interesting examples from the likes of Cornwall, um, where they're now working on a, an overarching movement strategy that's gonna cover everything that they, that they do in Cornwall. And ATSP is a way of them testing some of the things for that, but it creates that legacy of how they want to move forward. Um, and then the longer term impacts that we're hoping to prove for the individuals, but also for the system. So who are these 11 pilots that I'm uh, putting on the pedestal? Who are these 11 that are doing the job? Um, we've tried to look for a spread uh, when we approved uh, the bids for these. We didn't want to have too many clusters doing it in the same area. We also didn't want to approve a whole load of uh, programs that were very similar to each other. So that's where you're seeing that there are varying levels of investment that we've made, um, up to 1.5 million, but it starts off with uh, an authority that's got around 800K. And when you think about the differences that those pilots are going to do with that funding, it gives us a chance to test and learn a few ideas around how they can engage with a larger population, with a smaller population, with populations where the social prescribing or the transport systems are quite enhanced and where they're still being developed. Um, and just to quickly run through them, we've got Gateshead, Leeds, Doncaster, Nottingham, Suffolk, Plymouth, Cornwall, Bath and North East Somerset, Staffordshire, Bradford, and finally Cumbria. So as I mentioned, the pilot areas had to identify within their local authority areas, where did they want to work, but they also had to identify who they wanted to work with. And this is where I suppose there's probably no surprise to the people in this room looking at the list of uh, target cohorts, that these are the, the individuals that need that support um, and are recognized to have the largest health um, inequalities when it comes to being physically active, but also when it comes to the opportunities that are around for them. Um, and, you know, we can talk about any one of those groups in isolation, but actually, you know, someone 
who uh, is disabled is going to be demonstrating quite high levels of you know, long-term health conditions as well. Someone who comes from an area of deprivation could equally be someone who's also unemployed. So there's a lot of crossover between the, the different cohorts that are in there. But for every single intervention that's been identified by a pilot, each of those pilots has that uh, theory of change that I brought up, but they've got it at a local level. So it scales up to what it is that we're trying to do from what they're trying to do. Um, so what are the types of activity that we're talking about doing? So, you know, walking and cycling, I, like I say, I guess there's probably no surprise in terms of what that is. It's lead walks, it's cycle training, it's um, personalized travel planning, it's teaching people basic bike maintenance skills, it's taking them on health walks, it's uh, getting them to use the green spaces and the parks and some of the uh, local infrastructure that they've got in their communities. But uh, there's also a large amount of work around informa information sharing and consultation. And this is where it's going out to these community groups and actually saying to them, this is what we're planning to do in your area. Is that what you need? Is that going to make a difference? Could we do this in a slightly different way? Um, and by mapping out some of the routes that are out there and uh, creating certain schemes like travel, uh, travel active challenges or um, you know, mass participation events. Again, it's just trying to nudge the dial a little bit in the way of this is normal behavior. This is actually something that you can do quite easily. This is something that is being done by your peers. It's being done within your community and actually it's showing a benefit and it just creates that opportunity for easier engagement with it. Um, and I think the final two major points of what these activities are doing is, I suppose the first four that I've just brought up are tied to the individuals. Um, but there's also the system change work where it's about barriers being identified, barriers being removed, barriers being uh, reduced. Can we create better working uh, relationships between partners? Is there a gap where actually we need to create more partners or bring in some external resource into those local authorities where actually there isn't the skill set or there isn't the, the local opportunities to do that just yet? Um, and all of the programs have been uh, based on the Combi Behaviour Change Program uh, model. So that idea of the capability, the opportunity, and the motivation needing to be present in order to change the behavior that you're looking for. So everything is, is embedded within that. So I mentioned I was gonna do a quick word on monitoring and evaluation. I emphasize it will be a very quick word. Um, but we have spoken quite a lot about here about how this program is trying to do lots of different types of ways of doing it, and it's trying to learn lots of different things from different pilots, larger scale, smaller scale, uh, cycling being given to one cohort but not to another and that creates a bit of a minefield to be honest with you when you're talking around well what do you do for a shared monitoring and evaluation program and so because of that we have a, a shared core monitoring evaluation framework that overarches everything around how we're trying to do it it tries to create some commonality in the questions that we're asking in the methodology of how it's going to be given out but then that's given to the pilots to then implement in unique ways so where they've got the opportunity to trial the traditional face-to-face paper-based survey where they can uh, do it uh, as an online version in consultation type methodologies and see where we can sort of draw some of it out. But it's also about being sort of, I guess, um, pragmatic about the, the individuals that you're engaging with, but also the activities that you're delivering. If you're doing a one-off event and you're gonna speak to that person for one time, you don't wanna spend half an hour of that, that session doing a survey with them, right? So it's how do you make it proportional to the activity that you're doing? And what we're hopefully going to get from that at the end of it is we're going to have both impact and process monitoring all the way through the program that can be scaled up then to kind of say, this is working in one of the pilot areas. Could it work in another one? If it's working in one, but another pilot is doing something similar and it's not working, well, why is that? Can we draw any learnings from that? Does that help us to aggregate the data up? Does that help us to create some sort of meta-analysis of, of where we're going with this and actually then maybe draw some learnings out for future funding uh, and future approaches to to working in this kind of way. Uh, and the national evaluation is as much about working with Active Travel England in our approach as it is about working with the pilots to understand what the local uh, workers managed to do. Because Active Travel England, you know, it's a new executive agency, but it's also working in a very different way with this funding. I suppose, you know, apart from the partners that we spoke about working with and the local systems that we're trying to engage with, there's also a different approach to the project management where we've got a community practice session on a monthly basis where we draw everyone together through the power that is teams, give them the opportunity to network with each other, but to also share the learnings of what's working and what's not working. Um, there's that one-to-one -one conversation that I've had the opportunity to have with the pilots so I can understand better about how ATE can do the work that we're trying to do and actually be supportive of what the pilots are trying to do on the ground. Um, 
So, we're going to finish with a video, and I think that's going to come in, so I'll shut up. My name's Mary Jane, I am 37 years old, and I'm from Newcastle on Dwight. Um, I heard about Int2 at an event at the Job Centre. I um, sort of gave them the details, and we met up for a bike ride initially, and as far as I know, it was the first bike ride of the N2 scheme. Um, I was really nervous because I do suffer with anxiety and um, I went along, I um, just forced myself really to go along and I've run look back since really. Um, I've done some one-to-one -one, um, sessions with Ant and I've also done some walking, um, walking groups um, which I thoroughly enjoyed, um, both of them. It's really made me come out of my shell. Um, and yeah, it's just built my confidence. Um, I've met quite about four members of the N2 team. They're very encouraging and um, supportive. Nice to chat to. And I like to know what they're talking about uh, with riding bikes and, and, and going on walks and the routes and things. They feel safe in the knowledge that I'm not going to get lost and um, the distance and the pace and everything is all taken care of by them. The programme's benefited me, um, mainly in my confidence and coming out. Like I say, I've been off work for quite some time. Um, I've got a, a long-term health condition. Um, I've actually gained employment during the time that I've been um, cycling um, and through the, and through the scheme. Um, it's built my confidence drastically. I was so anxious and shaky and nervous before I came along. And I'm able now to go out on my own. I fully believe that exercise is good for mental health. And it's, it's just helped me in that way. I've received moral support and definitely built my confidence. I've, re I've um, been given a bike for six months, which has really um, boosted my activity whilst on my own. I've been going out on my bike uh, more regularly. I'd say definitely go to reach out to N2. Just getting out there because I wasn't going out before and I had to reach out. Um, but I, it was the best thing that I did. So I would encourage anybody looking to reach out to N2 to, to go for it and you won't regret it. Great, so uh, I don't know about you, but I absolutely love with that video. I think it does a far better job than I have of explaining what this program is trying to do and how it's trying to work with individuals on the, uh, on the ground. Uh, the Staffordshire program that's just been explained there has a very core aspect of trying to engage with people where unemployment is rife and trying to support individuals into work through active travel. And I think the example that's just been given in that, that video is a real... Thank you. It's a really good example of how that work has been done. Um, so just to finish off in terms of where we are with this program, um, the funding was given last August to the pilots. And during that time, the pilots have obviously been hit by quite a few different things, whether it's a change in monarch, a couple of changes in government, um, and a few of the different bits and pieces. But that's when you then also take it back into the commissioning and the staffing situations that are in, in going on within local authorities. So we've launched activities across the summer now, and you'll start to see a lot more of these programs over the next sort of six months in terms of the different work that they're doing. And I'd really encourage for anyone who's living or working within the areas uh, that these pilots are, please reach out, please offer your support to them because they're fantastic, it's a great opportunity. And I think you know, in a couple of years time, there's gonna be some really interesting data that comes from this about how we could work together in the future. Thank you.